Uh, we are called to order at uh, six o'clock and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, Patty. Hi. Okay, Edith, would you please do the roll call? Sure. <laughs> Commissioners, Mayor Jane Badaghi? Here. Susan Hayes? Here. Kelsey Lamb? Here. Mira Parikh? Mira. She waved at you. She's here okay. with you. Patty Powers? Here. Janine Rubin Obram? Here. And Chairperson Joe Colacci. Thank you, uh, Edith, uh, here. Okay, uh, Jay, any amendments to the agenda? No amendments to the agenda, um, but I want to mention that to, to Aaron, IT, Pamela Zelski from um, uh, Sunflower Hill is trying to get in. So I don't know if you see uh, Pamela Zelski trying to get into the meeting. If she joins by the attendee link, um, I can make her a panelist if she's supposed to be a panelist. No, not, not a panelist, just an attendee. Okay, all right. We do have two attendees in, so I know it's working. I don't know if okay. her link is wrong or... Okay, I'll try and navigate that as we go along. Okay. I'll email you a link, Jay, uh, Jay to send to her. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, next uh, we go to our minutes that were uh, sent ahead from February. Are there any additions, deletions, discussion, subtractions, <laughs> changes, or do we have a motion to approve? I move we approve. Thank I'll you, Mary. Second. Thank you. We have a Great. motion and a second. Yeah, who was the second, please? Patty. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Eight minutes are passed. Thank you. Okay, we are now to the public comment uh, from the audience not listed on the agenda. Anything that we have? Is this the speaker card for item two or no? Correct. Uh, yeah, we do have a speaker. No speaker cards? No, we do. Oh, we do. Uh, for, for Carrie Oldies. Okay, if you could uh, get Carrie on there. Welcome, Carrie. Good evening. Thank you all for allowing me a few moments. I wanted to, I am Carrie Olds, a program manager for the Mills on Wheels program with Spectrum Community Services. It is March, and March is the anniversary of the Mills on Wheels program. And I wanted to invite everyone out that would like to come and take a ride along with us during the month of March. The week of Monday the 21st through Friday the 25th is Champions Week. So if any of you are available then, please give me a call and I'm happy to take you out and have you see what it is that we're doing here in the community. Secondly, I would like to invite everyone if they're not already planning on going to go to the Dublin Parade. We will be walking in that on March the 12th. And last but not least, we are doing a twilight tasting tomorrow night at the Page Mill. And just as we're all starting to get back out and enjoy things, if you have a few moments and you wanna get out and have a glass of wine, come join us at the Page Mill in Livermore. And we'd be happy to see you there. Again, if you need to reach me for the Mills on Wheels um, March for Mills ride along, you can reach me at my email. It is my name, colds at spectrumcs.org. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Happy Carrie, anniversary. Carrie, quick question. What time um, is Page Mill tomorrow? It is from 4.30 to 8. It's a kind of come, come and go as you will. It's not a designated time for anything, but if you're out, um, it's a nice little venue. It will be in their outside uh, terrace with heated, um, with heat lamps. So if it's chilly as suspected with rain tomorrow, there will be some warmth there. So if you are a wine person, come out and join us. If not, just come out and join us and have a good time. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And Carrie's a good 
tour guide. I, I did do a, a ride along with her. So she'll, she'll okay. make it fun. Um, do we have any other speaker cards? And we have a hands up. Um, Joe? Yes. Um, this is for Jay. Jay, I just got a text from Pam Zilski that she's still trying to get in and the uh, meeting ID that you provided is invalid. Tell her to check her email. I just sent her an email. So okay. um, I know it's worked because I sent it to somebody from CityServe. Okay. So. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. No other speakers. Right, the joys of technology. <laughs> Thanks everybody for being patient. Okay, uh, now we are up to matters for review. Uh, so Jay, number three, the Housing and Human Services Grants presentation, it's all yours. All right. Good evening, commissioners um, and members of the public um, and potential grantees that are out there listening in the virtual world. Appreciate your time this evening. I have a short presentation. Um, that uh, myself and Steve Hernandez, the housing manager, will split. Um, also, Zach Silva uh, is listening in, um, not as a panelist, but he's listening in as well. Um, and so um, I'll go ahead and get started. So thank you for being here for the uh, uh, Housing and Human Services Grant Program for 2022-2023, which starts on July 1st of this calendar year. Uh, this item continues the annual process for distribution of housing and human services grant funds through the Human Services Commission and the Housing Commission. Um, the Human Services Commission, obviously, the recommendation from the commission will be this evening. And then the Housing Commission recommendation will be March 17th. And incidentally, the um, Community Grants Program next Monday night the Civic Arts Commission um, will discuss and, and provide recommendations. And then next Wednesday night, the Youth Commission um, will have their grants meeting as well. Um, so for this next fiscal year, 22-23, the Human Services Commission has approximately $458,000 in funds allocated for local projects and services. Of that amount, 188.5 is provided from the city's general fund and 269.6 is estimated to be provided by the Federal Community Block Development Grant funds. Commissioners, you may have noted that uh, um, when we met in February, the CDBG grant amount um, was a little bit less um, than it is actually tonight. And Steve Fernandez, who checks that uh, amount, we don't really get notified. Steve has to kind of find out what that amount is. Um, so it's our best estimate now um, of the actual amount of funds that we had. I think it was 55,000 for um, public service projects and 214,000 for um, capital projects. So 269.6 is the estimated um, for the community development block grant funds. So the action that we're asking for the Human Services Commission tonight is to provide a funding recommendation for the city council consideration. A little bit of background on this, 2010, the city implemented the HHSG program um, and um, that combined the funds that you see here on the screen together into one program, um, into a single streamlined grant program. Fiscal year 22-23 application timeframe for the applicants that are on the call was December 1st, uh, 2021 to January 19th, 2022. Total funds uh, requested by 28 applications that were received was $1.38 million. Total funds requested by the 20 applicants to be reviewed by the Human Services Commission, 743,200. Um, and total funds available for the Housing, uh, the Human Services Commission to award for the 20 applicants is 458,207. The Human Services Commission recommendation um, will focus on CDBG and city general funds for human services and non-housing capital projects. And then city council is tentatively scheduled to review um, the city grants program and the housing and human services grants program right now on April 19th, 2022. So this page that is also in the commission packet hopefully looks a little bit better on this screen um, I know it looks really small on your packet. Um, 
don't worry about it. We will go through this um, later on in the meeting as the commission deliberates um, and talks about the amounts um, that staff is recommending. Um, just wanted to sh share that with you all um, as we go forward. And so then I'll go to the next slide. Um, again, I said 28 applications were received, one capital rehabilitation project, um, which was Access Community Health. Um, project they requested two hundred thousand dollars for a new service site. Um, eight housing projects requested six hundred and forty thousand um, dollars, and nineteen public service projects for about five hundred and forty-three thousand in requests, and two hundred and forty-three seven were available. Um, and most public service projects have applied and received funds in prior years. There's four applicate applicants requesting funds that did not apply last year. Access Community Health, new, the new service site application that you all reviewed, Culinary Angels, a nutrition education website renewal, Hively Family Resource Center, and Lions Blind Center of Mount Diablo, independent living skills. Um, and so we will hear from three of those four applicants um, tonight and those projects um, for the benefit of the public at the February um, Human Services Commission meeting, the commission um, recommends which agencies they want to hear from at, at the February meeting. They're in the middle towards the end of reviewing the applications. And if the commissioners have questions on applications or they want to have uh, discussion um, in more depth uh, on particular projects, the commission directs staff and says, hey, can you um, let this agency come and speak to us in, in March? And so as a result of that, and in addition to the new projects that are that come forward every year, um, they're typically asked to come and give a real quick three minute presentation that we'll get into in a, a couple of minutes. Historically, the minimum grant award was $5,000. Um, we've kind of gotten away from that the last few years. Um, and so you'll see in the staff recommendation that uh, we're trying to hold to that $5,000 that made it tough with the limited amount of funds, but we'll go ahead and go through the process and, and see where it ends in the end of the evening tonight. <sighs> staff funding recommendation, um, the recommendation in attachment one, which was that Excel spreadsheet um, with all the small numbers on it. The uh, aims to address local service gaps as addressed in the statement of priorities, which is attachment four on your packet or in your packet. Um, all, rec all projects are recommended to be funded with the exception of the following Assistance League of Amador Valley, Culinary Angels, and Lions Blind Center of Mount Diablo. So um, a little bit more in depth about the grant uh, review and what it really includes. Multiple staff reviews in both the housing division, Steve and his division, and the library and recreation department. Um, we also sit down um, with Dublin and Livermore and go over their housing and human services um, applications and have discussions with them um, to see where they're, where they're landing or where they're recommending. Um, we typically, Pleasanton Human Services is the first one to go of all three, all, all three cities. So. Sometimes we have those discussions with Dublin Livermore and they're not really sure. They haven't formalized their, their recommendations yet, but uh, we do have that discussion to try. And the goal is to try and make sure that some of our um, you know, service providers um, that have historically filled you know, safety gap areas, um, we try to cover them as best we can from a regional perspective. Um, and then also evaluation of applications with the Human Services Commission all that painstaking hours that the commission went through to go through the 20 or so applications. Uh, also look at past year's performances through the um, evaluation uh, process. Um, and then look at the program projects. Does it address core safety net services identi and identified service gap areas? And then also another factor is, is this uh, project potentially, or is it duplicative services to another agency that provides um, similar or the same kind of service. Um, and then lastly, distribution of funds across a variety of community needs to try and cover all of the areas that the commission is focusing on in the statement of priorities, which is our attachment four. 
So the presentation schedule, which we're probably already behind schedule on, yep, we are, um, is 610, we'll hear from Culinary Angels, 620, Hively, and 630, Lions Blind Center. Ideally, we'll have, uh, I've asked the, uh, those three agencies to give a quick three minute presentation. The commission can ask questions. Um, obviously that makes two minutes for commission questions. We'll, if there's more than two minutes worth of questions, we'll certainly take the time and just bump the schedule a little bit longer. So with that, I'll turn it over to Steve, um, if I can real quickly, and he'll go over this slide because it has to do with the housing related applications. Thank you, Jay. Uh, good evening, um, Human Services Commissions uh, and members of the public. Um, this slide is fairly um, short, <laughs> uh, even though there's a lot of words. Uh, the main takeaway of this slide are these are what we consider um, applicants that are providing affordable housing related services to Pleasanton residents. And these are the usual suspects that the Housing Commission uh, has recommended for funding in the past. Um, Abode Services, they have a rapid rehousing program uh, that provide uh, reducing subsidies for um, homeless or at-risk uh, Pleasanton households. Uh, Central Legal uh, provides uh, eviction, legal eviction defense. Uh, they were actually fairly new, but a, this new fiscal year is the first time uh, they've actually are being uh, funded. Uh, and because uh, the eviction moratorium for Alameda County um, is expected to be terminated uh, in the coming months, uh, we staff believes that their services is going to be really critical uh, for the upcoming fiscal year. Cedar Service of the Tri-Valley, um, they have a homeless intervention. Um, they are actually the ones that are going out to our encampment sites uh, and trying to provide services uh, for our homeless uh, Pleasantonians. Uh, Krill, um, you know, they provide uh, housing and independent living services uh, for uh, Pleasanton residents who with disabilities. Uh, Echo Housing provides ho uh, housing counseling and fair housing services for Pleasanton residents. Uh, Goodness Village, uh, if you recall, uh, you actually uh, were tasked to actually review and score Goodness Village uh, among the Zoom grants applications. But uh, we did provide instructions to you that we are pulling uh, Goodness Village out of your review. Uh, and because it is a tiny homes community out in Livermore, uh, we felt it was more appropriate for the Housing Commission uh, to review this project uh, because it is an, uh, an affordable housing related project and we could potentially fund it with our low income housing fund. Habitat for Humanity uh, is our administrator for our housing rehabilitation program and Tri-Valley Reach, um, you are well aware of them. They provide uh, affordable housing um, for adults with developmental disabilities. Uh, and this particular project, uh, they actually would like to make seismic retrofit um, completions uh, at their Tanager property. So uh, as Jay had already explained, uh, the Housing Commission uh, would be reviewing these eight applicants uh, on March 17th. Thanks, Jay. Can I ask Thanks. a question? Oh. Thank you, Steve. Can uh, I ask a question? Sure. Uh, where are the habitat sites in Pleasanton? So that's throughout the city. Um, Habitat, um, they actually work with uh, homeowners to provide safety and uh, health improvements to their homes. I mean, are they, are they currently building new homes in Pleasanton through Habitat or rehabilitating old homes? We are, re, they are helping uh, provide either grants or loans for existing homeowners to rehabilitate their homes. Okay, so but they're not sure. building, they're not building new homes like in other cities. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Sure. All right. So in conclusion, um, as I wrap up, the Housing, the Human Services Commission has asked to review and recommend funding levels for the non-housing related programs and projects, uh, provide a motion for recommendation to the City Council, which again will be scheduled hopefully for April 19th. Um, and then the Human Services Commission recommendation will be shared with the Housing Commission on March 17th. So 
Um, before we go on to the three agencies that have uh, presentations prepared, is there any questions of, uh, of staff? I assume, Jay, I assume we'll be coming after their presentation, we'll be coming back to go through the allocation, correct? Yes, okay. yes, yep, yep. All right, so hearing no questions, I will stop the share on that and bring us back to the regular Zoom view and um, turn it back to the chair. Joe, do you wanna, um, do you want to take over the meeting and um, bring in Culinary Angels, Lisa McEnany? Sure thing. Thank you, Jay and Steve, for that uh, report. Uh, good level set for the rest of the evening. Much appreciated. Um, so first, uh, as Jay mentioned, we will have Lisa McEnany from Culinary Angels. Um, Aaron will uh, graciously keep time for us. And then uh, if there's any questions for Lisa after. Uh, and commission will be able to ask that. So Lisa, welcome to our meeting and you're on. All right, thank you all so much. Good evening. We really appreciate this opportunity so much to present briefly. I understand the, the sensitivity to time. Um, I'm Lisa McNanny. I'm the founder and executive director of Culinary Angels. We are a nonprofit organization that provides organic meals and nutrition education to people going through a cancer challenge. Um, we were founded in 2016 and we realized, I realized as a cancer survivor, there's a lot of nutritional benefit that is typically missed in a medical world through the benefit of having a meal provided to you that is nutrient rich, conscious, um, and really actively supporting a person's immune system. So we also provide the meals for the caregiver. Uh, I deeply believe that the caregiver plays a very important role in a person's healing journey. And so that is part of, of our philosophy as well, that if that team is solid, a person will likely benefit. So this is our first time um, seeking funding from this organization. So we very, very much appreciate it. Um, we are seeking $5,000 to rebuild our website and specifically the recipe menu portion so that we can be seen as a viable nutritional resource to our recipients, the caregivers, the caregiving community, and also the general public. So at this point, we provide information in our delivery bags about specific ingredients, where people can find them, but we need to revamp our website and really make it a little bit more updated with our more recent meals and recipes so that people can have that access anytime they'd like. Um, it's my understanding we're the only organization for sure in the East Bay, but maybe even San Francisco Bay Area that provides this type of organic nutrition to a person's home at no cost. And the other great thing about us is we're 98% volunteer led. So we're really a solid community collaborated organization. We partner with four local gardens. Sunflower Hill is one of our big supporters and we work out of their facility right now. So we would really appreciate your consideration for this funding. It would greatly improve the nutritional education that we can provide to not only the people that we serve, but the, but the people in the Tri-Valley cities, uh, the five Tri-Valley cities that we deliver to. So very much appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for that presentation. Uh, we actually have a little bit of extra time. So commissioners, any questions? Um, Lisa, uh, this is MJ. Um, I mean, your program sounds so incredibly good for people with cancer. Would you be able to just tell me just in a thumbnail sketch of what your other sources of income have been? So most of our other sources have been mini grants and private donations. Um, we have one large fundraiser a year, uh, but up to this point, we have never had really the ability or the bandwidth to, to apply to larger kind of organizations. Um, we just, we haven't had a grant right or anything like that. So we've really mostly remained on smaller local community mini grants and mostly private donation, individual donations. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I do, but I'll wait my turn. <laughs> okay, um, so Lisa, thank you again for the presentation. So, so the, the, um, the money you're asking for is for the website, but your organization actually also provides the food? 
We do. That's primarily what our program is. So half of our mission is our deliver our meal program. And then we also have this nutritional education program where we believe it's really important for to not only give the people the fish, but the saying is to teach them how to fish and through a solid educational opportunity so people can understand where to source their produce. Um, what to do with it, and then how to sustain and maintain their wellness going forward is a huge value. Um, we're also uh, debuting at the Pleasanton Farmers Market this Saturday, March 5th. We'll be having um, a, a huge produce donation drive. We'll align with eight to 10 of the organic vendors. People can fill out a list and help put in if we need 10 cauliflowers and 100 pounds of potatoes, they can pay the farmer, which is fabulous for the farmer and local economy. And then we get offset the costs and um, really helps with lowering our, our costs. And it's also great community awareness. So we're excited to be in your town starting uh, March 5th and every other Saturday. That's great. And where, where do you get your patients from? So our top three referral sources, one is Kaiser Dublin, the cancer care center that opened a few years ago, Stanford Valley Care also, and word of mouth, either through our volunteers or through a friend of a friend. Um, we have a marketing effort in place this year where we're really going after the underserved areas because we know there are more people out there that could really benefit from our service but they don't know about us yet. So we're about 30 meals a week under capacity at this point. And we are a well-oiled machine that wants to pop out the meals and can do them beautifully consciously. I know um, Janine has seen some of our meals with the beautiful edible flowers and little ties of cilantro. So there's an incredible visual appeal as well as the nutritional fortification that we provide. Great, thank you. Any, any other questions? I do have one question that just popped up in my yeah. head. Um, Lisa, do you, are there any kind of income requirements or low income requirements for people to be served by culinary angels? We do not have a low income criteria. Um, we assume that cancer is non-discriminatory <laughs> and it is non-discriminatory and we welcome anyone who is going through a cancer challenge to receive a healthy meal from us. So we don't specifically target people with a specific income level or need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else for Lisa? Thank you, Lisa. We greatly appreciate your Thank presentation. You. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, up next will be uh, Vanessa from Hively. Thank you for your patience, Vanessa. Vanessa, before you get started, can I interrupt? I just wanna check in with IT. Um, Aaron, I got a, about half a dozen emails saying that the link on the agenda didn't work. So I forwarded those individuals, uh, your link that you sent, uh, at least I believe I did. So hopefully you're getting some more attendees coming into the meeting. We've got 12 total. Is there okay. anybody in particular? Um, let me look. I'll just um, hang on. Sorry, commissioners. This um, will not count against your time, Vanessa. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can I ask a quick question while we're all reviewing? Is it, would, it is important for me to stay on the call or would you prefer that I exit at this time? Uh, After these, I was gonna move you guys to attendees. After I'm sorry? the three presentations, after the three presentations, I'm going to move you guys to attendees. Got it. Thank you so much. So, Aaron, Christine Beach Bamani, um, Jennifer Petley. I see those two. Yes. Denise Barr. Yep. Sarah Holtzclaw. And no. Pamela Zelsky. Pamela Zelsky still having trouble getting in. I think. I saw, nope, I see her in too. All of those you listed are in. Perfect, okay, good, thank you. All right, Vanessa, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, first of all, I wanna say thank you for this opportunity. It's always great to tell you a little more about our program, especially with our upcoming exciting news. Um, first of all, for those of you that are not familiar, highly, we believe that thriving communities begin with thriving families. As many of you already know, Hively is a multifaceted social services agency who's been serving the lowest income families in the Tri-Valley for over 40 years. Most of Hively's clients live well below the poverty line and cannot afford the basic resources they need to survive. 
Hively's mission is to provide resources and support so that everyone in our community can thrive. We provide economic supports through our community outreach programs, which provide free food, diapers, clothing, shoes, and other basic necessities to families in need. Affordable mental health services on a sliding scale, child care subsidies, parent education classes to support healthy home environments, and family strengthening classes to support the parent-child bond. When families do not have enough money to provide for their basic needs, they have to make tough decisions on where to spend their money and what they must do without. Receiving free resources like food, diapers, and clothing give parents breathing room so they don't have to choose between buying food and putting gas in the car or between paying bills and buying diapers. With our help, they're able to have a stable home environment where their family is healthy, nourishing food, have the right size, seasonally appropriate clothing and shoes, and enough diapers to keep their children healthy and safe. Hively is very excited to announce the opening of our first Hively Family Resource Center located in Dublin. What started in a few spare offices in our previous building, our diaper pantry, community closet, and food pantry now have a permanent home in our 3,000 square foot storefront located in Dublin down, downtown Dublin, an area accessible to community members throughout the Tri-Valley. At no cost, the Hively Family Resource Center will provide a one-stop shop for families to obtain all the basic necessities they need, all under one roof for maximum convenience and accessibility. The diaper pantry providing diapers, wipes, and early literacy materials. The community closet providing new and gently used clothing, shoes, books, and housewares. And the food pantry providing food and other basic necessities. All the resources are provided free of charge to families in need. Families may choose what they want and take what they need for a dignified shopping experience. When families visit our Family Resource Center, they receive more than just diapers, food, and clothing. They gain access to a wealth of resources and services offered by Hively, including affordable mental health services, childcare subsidies, and referrals. In addition to our program staff, our community outreach team is working behind the scenes to manage the operations of the FRC, including receiving and storing thousands of generous donations, managing the hundreds of volunteers who assist with the sorting, folding and organizing, and cultivating and maintaining relationships and donors and community partners. Just on time. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. You obviously <laughs> practiced to get it into that three minutes. So <laughs> I cut out you. a few things as I saw okay. that red light start flashing at me. So um, feel fair, free to ask fair, any questions. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any questions by the commissioners? I have one just to clarify, Vanessa. So Dublin, you said is opening soon and Pleasanton is still going on once Dublin's open, yes? So yes, yeah, so Dublin is an addition to our Pleasanton office. So now we have offices throughout Alameda County. We have one in Oakland and Fremont. We have our main in Pleasanton and Dublin is an additional office. Okay, and is there any plans for Livermore as well or will Pleasanton and Dublin offices serve the Livermore community? Yes, so we are. Um, we are in talks about opening a location in Livermore, which is very exciting, but it's very, very new. So I don't know what I can say at this point, but we are hoping to be in Livermore fairly soon. I won't tell anybody. Thank you. Okay. No, not that this is on YouTube or anything. Thanks, Patty. Anyone else? I did want to ask Vanessa, because this is, um, you, you've asked on behalf of a new program, can you differentiate the new from your current, like what, what distinguishes it as different? So previously we've requested funding specifically for our diaper pantry. So that's the program that provides a month supply of diapers for family, low income families. This funding is specifically gonna help the salaries to keep the FRC moving and functioning. We are greatly appreciative for the thousands of donations that we get each month, but it does take a lot of manpower to receive them, sort them, and get them out onto the storefront. Right now, we've been doing um, distributions once a month just due to COVID. Um, and each month, we're basically having about 200 to 250 of community members come through and they can one-stop shop, get their diapers, their food, their clothing, and their houseware. So it's just kind of more all of our programs that were kind of separate are now under one roof. Um, and the two newest is more of our community closet and the or the food pantry. Great, thank you. Great question. Anyone else with a question for Vanessa? Is, is the uh, Vanessa is a location in Dublin on the Amateur Valley 
Plaza Road or it is on Village Parkway. Oh, so Village we Parkway. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> get the streets mixed up. Okay. And uh, is there also a diaper pantry in Pleasant at the Pleasanton location as well? So it, everything is moving to our Dublin location. So now we started off the diaper pantry, the community closet, and our food pantry in little spare offices that we had at our Pleasanton office. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's all under one roof. So everything is moving to our family resource center. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and next uh, we will have Yolanda Braxton uh, from Lions Club. Again, thank you, Yolanda. We're, I'm thanking everyone for their patience tonight as we uh, get through our schedule. So Yolanda, you are up. Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon or evening, everyone. Um, I represent the Lions Blind Center of Diablo Valley, which is now called Lions Center for the Visually Impaired. And it's really important, all of the wonderful work that we've been doing uh, to support people with vision loss, in particular seniors with vision loss. Our services are really focused on increasing the quality of life for individuals who are blind and visually impaired. And with that being said, these services are not just about um, the early detection of vision loss or doing eye screenings of vision loss or looking at ways in which we can provide free glasses or free exams by an ophthalmologist. It really is about activities and events and engaging and ensuring that each senior that is blind or visually impaired really have a good quality of life. There are some individuals um, who are blind as a result of a birth issue, or there are some who, who are as a result of chronic illness, as a result of an accident, and the fear and the hurt and the anger that exists and the aloneness that exists, our goal is to really ensure and letting seniors know that you are not alone in vision loss, that it really is about um, engaging and being a part of a community. All of our services are free. We provide and work with and collaborate with senior centers, senior facilities, senior housing to actually go and do early detection program services where we screen for vision loss. We also engage in activities and events where we have encouraged and have a number of seniors who actually take um, our part of our virtual sessions or in our part of our on-site sessions, events like theater in the park where they're customized specifically for the senior, events like um, Oakland Museum and where our core clients are able to go and every expense is covered. So in general, we want um, seniors to feel alive and that their life has actually been engaging even though they are managing vision loss, economic issues, as well as chronic issues, and in the midst of this whole pandemic. So in general, we're there to be a supportive, free services and a resource for our seniors who are blind. Thank you, Yolanda. You practice too. You got it I right did. under that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any, any questions by the commissioners? I have a twofold question. Uh, one is, um, what is the relationship with the Lions Club? Is that <laughs> is that something official, or and is that volunteer? Uh, my second question is, since this is the first year that you've applied, uh, what have you been relying on for funding in the past? All right, excellent questions. So um, we are a result of a Lions member vision from the Lions Club District 4C3 that started in 1954. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, we are a, the only nonprofit organization that is in existence for vision loss in the Lions Club District 4 area. 
Mm-hmm. And so that's our relationship. They are extremely supportive. They provide leadership. They're on our board. Um, and they contribute financially through each of the clubs in District 4C3. Um, and they want um, uh, uh, LCVI, which is Lion Center for the Vision Impaired, to succeed. And so that's the response to the first question. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one is we have multiple funding streams. One stream is, obvious, is CDBG Contra Costa. The other is we are a major grantee of um, OIB program for DOR, Department of Rehab, older individuals who are blind, Title VII funding, and a number of foundations and corporations support us as well. Um, But the issue is that there are so many seniors in particular who are out there that are blind and feel totally cut off. And to be able to increase awareness about our free services, to be able to let them know that there is a resource there for visual vision health, um, that becomes the primary reason we are consistently um, doing fund development. Thank, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Yolanda, I have a question. Thank you, thank you for presenting tonight. I appreciate it. It's nice to know you're out there and um, yes. We like to get to know um, organizations. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he wants Sorry to talk to. <laughs> um, uh, so you said you work with the senior centers. I'm wondering where your referrals come from besides the senior centers. How do you get your clients? Uh, so again, our clients are referred to us um, from multiple organizations, from DOR, from. Um, the uh, Kaisers and North Bay's and um, other uh, hospital organizations from social services Mm -hmm. refer clients, community-based organizations refer clients, um, uh, organizations that we work with um, that are really focused on quality of health in general, like Meals on Wheels, like um, um, other organizations throughout the uh, county. So our referral base is pretty large. Um, We have um, facilities that are um, not only senior facilities, but some adult um, community-based facilities refer, uh, senior housing, et cetera. So it's a combination of different referrals. HMOs is a huge one though. Thank you so much. Yolanda, you you referenced, if I understood this right, dis, District Four. Uh, like, yes. like what what does that entail? Um, so, um, Lions Club District Four C three is the one of the districts under the Lions Club uh, State of California that covers the area of Alameda County, Solano County, Contra Costa County, or I think it's Alameda and uh, Alameda and Contra Costa, not Solano. Um, that goes into District 5. Um, so District 4 has really been active as a Lions Club, um, but we're not a club. We're actually the nonprofit arm, uh, not even an arm. It's, it's a separate entity, but District 4 really, again, supports us. So that's what District 4 is, 4C3. Thing. And, and I'm sure Alameda and Contra Costa are big enough without you having to add Solano too. So <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have enough work to do. So <laughs> okay. that is one of our service areas, though. But um, Lions Club is not part of Got that it. district. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Any, any other questions for Yolanda? Okay. Thank you all again to our Thank speakers you. for attending and presenting. Uh, so, uh, Jay, if I remember from our little, uh, pre-meet, uh, we will close the speaker part now, and then we will get to the, uh, actual slide with the, um, with the allocations, correct? Yes, you are correct. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to let the audience know with the backing of IT that, um, as we go through this, the rest of this agenda item, um, you can raise your hand, do the raise hand function. If you're on your phone, is it star six, um, Aaron? If they're if they're uh, if they're called in, I think it's star six. Okay, all right, that's what I'll, it's I'll confirm and I'll chime in. Okay, all right. So 
Um, I mention that because um, the three agencies that just spoke are the ones that were scheduled to speak. Um, if there's questions as we go through um, attachment one of the commission for individual agencies, um, we'll ask those. There'll be a little bit of delay as Aaron brings you in from the waiting room, so to speak, to answer the questions and have a little bit of dialogue that way. So um, we'll see how this technology works going forward. For now, um, well, let me go ahead and screen share the- That would be star nine, Jay. Star nine. Star nine to raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Can everybody see, I mean, I, I, hopefully everybody can see that. I don't know if they can really read it, but can you see it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. So um, for the benefit of the audience, um, what I'd like to do is just kind of spend a little bit of time on this. And I'm assuming you can see the, my cursor moving around. So we'll just follow, follow that. Um, there are um, different buckets of funds that I've talked with the Human Service Commission about. The first bucket of funds is column X, CDBG public service funds. Then there's CDBG capital improvement project funds. There's CDBG admin funds, which isn't really a bucket because that's what uh, the city uses to administer all these contracts. And then the third bucket, if you will, is the uh, city general fund bucket of funds. So going back to this column, you'll see that at the bottom here, there are right now, hopefully it'll go up. I, I don't know if it will or not, but we... Um, um, are anticipating 55,502 in CDBG public service funds. And you'll see that this, call, this um, cell right here is zero. So all the money as, as the staff recommendation is presented has been allocated. This next column here, um, column Y is the capital projects. Um, there's actually um, it's more, the allocation is 239,223. There's $24,000, a little bit more than $24,000 for the annual Section 108 loan payment for the Access Community Health Clinic from many years ago um, that the city continues to pay on. That leaves $214,000 uh, available for CDBG capital projects. So that's this cell down here. And then the other bucket of funds are the city uh, general funds, which total $188,528. Uh, so the challenge with all these great, amazing projects, and I, I'll say the, the, the disappointing um, um, exercise that we have to go through this evening is with a limited amount of funds and all the great projects, um, we now is the time to where we talk about the, based the staff recommendation as the starting point for the discussion. Um, and so um, you can see this, um, this column here um, was the funds that were requested. Um, and this column, column F, um, the um, total that is being recommended as of right now, that could change um, after the discussion this evening, um, are all in this column for each individual project. Um, and the, where the money comes from is in the green and the pink columns. So let me just go real quick um, through the projects. Access Community Health, um, they requested $200,000. They were the only capital improvement project um, that applied. And since there's 214,478, um, we're staff recommendation is to um, fund the whole 214,000. So we don't have 14,000 left over. Um, and then going down into uh, services and food, Culinary Angels, they requested $5,000. Starting point for staff recommendation, unfortunately, is zero. Um, the Open Heart Kitchen, they have a combination of funds, 28,000 and 25,000 for a total of 53,000 um, recommendation, they asked for 70. Spectrum Community Services um, asked for 53. They have a combination of CDBG um, 
public service funds and general funds as well. Um, and then Tri-Valley Haven, the food pantry, they asked for uh, 45,000. The recommendation, staff recommendation is 21,000. Tri-Valley Haven, Shiloh and Sojourner House um, for both actually Shiloh, they asked for 35. Then Sojourner, they asked for 30. Staff recommendation is eight out of general fund and seven out of general fund for Sojourner. Um, going to services, financial and legal, Calico um, Center. Um, they asked for 11,000. Staff recommendation is for five. Legal assistance for seniors. Um, the recommended ask was $10,000. Uh, staff recommendation is five. Tri-Valley Haven Counseling and Legal Services. The ask was for 30,000. Staff recommendation is 7,000. Um, um, services disabled special needs, both Sunflower Hill projects. The first project was 19.2 ask. Um, 5,000 um, for that was staff recommendation. And Sunflower Hill number two, 25,000 was the ask and 5,100 was staff recommendation. And then for services, other assistance league of Amador Valley, uh, Operation School Bell, the ask was 8,000. And unfortunately the staff recommendation is zero at this point. Um, and then Chabot, Las Positas, Tri-Valley One Stop has the job support project and the EITC, uh, the tax program. Um, the ask was for 19, five and actually 20, $22,000 uh, for the job support and 19 and change uh, for the EITC. Staff recommendation for both of those is $5,000. Um, and then city serve of the Tri-Valley Homeless Prevention uh, their ask was for 80,000 um, and staff recommendations 58. I believe the two projects, you heard one of the projects tonight, the community engagement coordinator, uh, they asked for 25,000, $5,000 staff recommendation. The family resource center asked was for 25,000 as well. Um, the staff recommendation is nine. And then last is the uh, Lions Blind Center of Diablo Valley. Um, Yolanda just spoke to that. Their ask was $10,000, and unfortunately, the staff recommendation is zero at this point. Um, and so that's about all the good news that I have. <laughs> and Jay, Hope, Hope Hospice. I'm sorry, what? Hope Hospice. Oh, sorry. I skipped over Hope Hospice. Yes, thank you. The Grief Support and Volunteer Services. Uh, $20,000 was the ask, and $5,000 is the staff recommendation. So um, with that, I will um, wrap up by saying now this, at this point in the meeting, this is where the commission will ask questions of staff. They'll ask questions of particular agencies. They'll ask questions of each other. Um, they'll, and ideally they'll land on a singular recommendation. I will be the notes taker here and manipulate the either green or pink or purple columns um, to where it uh, still ends up with a zero balance down in this area right here. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Chair Carlucci to uh, um, take over the meeting and start the discussion, del deliberation, or how, whatever you want to call it. Can Thank I, you. Can I make a quick comment first? Sure. Thanks. So Jay, at the very bottom column, can you just explain the very last line item if you can scoot to the bottom of the page? Sure. This one, this line right here. Where it shows the city of Pleasanton administration of the program. I'm putting my air on it. That's not going to help. Line, you. line 41, Jay. Thank no, you. 41. 40. Yes. 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 Can you explain what that is? Uh, unaware? I can, I can, but Steve, um, who administers the, the funds is probably the best to, to explain it. So Steve, can I, uh, can I bring you back in the meeting to answer the question? Sure. Uh, so commissioner powers, uh, so under the CDBG program, uh, we are actually able to take 20% of our annual allocation for administration. So that 73,606 is 20% of the allocation that we have um, currently. So if that goes up or goes down, then obviously the funding goes up or down. 
Um, the other thing that I would add is uh, CDBG has a very strict 15% cap for public services. So um, that 55,205 that you see is 15% of our annual allocation. So we cannot exceed um, that 15% cap. Uh, otherwise we would have to use non-federal funds to pay it back. Okay. So as a point of clarification, Jay, when we're first told, here's your bucket from which you can spend money, has that already been pulled out of it or has that not yet been pulled yes. out of it? Yeah, that's been pulled out of it. Yeah. Before we start doing our allocations. Correct. Okay, thanks. I just you'll, see, you'll see up here where this, when we talked in February, the uh -huh. amount was 200,000. And that's what we okay. talked about one of the buckets being. Um, since then, Steve found out that it's gone up to 214000 So that's why this bucket says uh, $214,000. Okay. So then you've already taken out the 70 something thousand dollars before we see the 214. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay, um, yeah. Thank you. I just thought that would, and I, I know we did this last year, but I thought for someone who's sitting in on this for the first time, that might be a good, hey, wait, what's that line kind of a question to cover? Yeah. No, so, thank you. And, and along those same lines, did you say it's 15% of the total? Is that correct? Steve. Yeah, so, so, so public services has a 15% cap uh, on whatever our annual allocation is for that fiscal year. Okay. So what about in the prior year? What was, or, or does it have an actual amount? I guess it does show on here that 68,000 was allocated the prior year. So I, again, it would depend on what our annual allocation was at that particular fiscal year, mm -hmm. um, but as Jay alluded to, we are actually using last year's um, sort of estimated amounts for our CDBG um, simply because HUD has not provided us, provided us with our CDBG allocation for the upcoming fiscal year. Mm -hmm. but wouldn't, wouldn't the amount from last year be quite a bit larger because the amount allocated last year was so much higher? I mean, the amount. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, I so I've been doing this 15 years. I believe I've had three fiscal years where the allocation actually went down. Mm -hmm. So HUD has their own formula that they go through, very meticulous formula. Uh, and, you know, we're just provided our allocation. They kind of sort of give you a methodology, but it's sort of, it's hard to understand, to be honest. Uh, so now uh, I I was speaking with Jay uh, earlier today, and we believe it's going to go up. Um, but unless we actually um, get that published amount, uh, we can only sort of use our existing allocation uh, to budget, which makes it really difficult to budget when you don't know your funding amounts. But uh, that's kind of how HUD uh, has operated. Um, so I, you know, there's been times where they actually publish in January. There's been times they publish in February, but lately they've been publishing closer to April, May. And maybe it's also because as I understand it, last year's extra funding came from the city budget and that wouldn't be part of that allocation. Yes, that would be completely separate. Our our CDBG allocation um, has is it's HUD's methodology, uh, kind of saying, okay, City of Pleasanton, this is your award for this particular fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Any um, other questions? I have another question. Would Jay, would you mind just giving us a thumbnail sketch too of the three the the, the logic between not not funding the three organizations that were um set at zero yeah let me get my notes so culinary angels was the first one and i think that was um brought up um earlier in the discussion um the in the calculations it talked about serving moderate income and mm -hmm. this program is really focused at uh, serving um, low income um residents Right. Um, and then they were low in the ranking from the overall commission ranking. Um, and um, so those were two of the factors. The next one 
is uh, Assistance League of Amador Valley. Let me see that. Um, they ranked pretty low as far as the commission uh, went as well. Um, and they um, could be considered as duplicative services uh, to Hively's uh, closet that we just heard about. Um, part of their program is clothing as well. Um, and they had a fair amount of funders um, that were also asked. Um, and um, so those were the three factors. They also talked a little bit about the Title I schools where they work closely with the Title I schools. And um, we have, I think, one Title I school in Pleasanton that's uh, Valley View. So there's not, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe um, somebody can uh, talk to that a little bit later. And then lastly, um, which is the last one? Oh, Lions, let's go Lions. Lions. Yeah, where is that? Okay. Um, wasn't sure in some of the reporting, it talked about serving 25 or 15, some of the, so I wasn't sure in questions nine and 10 that they didn't match and it, I wasn't, so I wasn't sure um, 15 or 20 um, individuals that they were serving. Um, and then um, I think it also was brought up that uh, um, they have a fair amount of committed funds already um, um, from their funding sources that, that, that were spoken to earlier from Yolanda. And I think they also, you know, collectively from the commission's perspective ranked, I think the lowest of the, of all the applications that were, um, rated. So does that answer your question, MJ? Yeah. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay. Lots of, lots of good, uh, context for us to start going through the list. Mm -hmm. So um, we will start with um, line nine or submission number three, Access Community Health. Is there anyone from Access or any public comments? Uh, and then we'll go to commission comments. Nobody's hands raised. Oh, thank wait. you. Never oh. mind. Uh, Sue. Hello. Hello, Sue. Am we I can hear you, Sue. Yes. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um, okay. To commissioners, any questions for Sue on the project? Uh, I'm hearing none and seeing none. Actually, I have one. Oh, okay, good. You got it under the under the wire, Patty. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Um, please, please if, refresh my memory. When is this program? Um, when is this um, facility supposed to begin breaking ground and getting open? Uh, we have a purchase sale agreement in place. We are currently in the due diligence process, which means we are assessing it to be sure it's a viable opportunity for us. Um, it is tentatively scheduled to close on July 1st. Assuming everything falls into place, we are estimating about 12 to 18 months for construction. The entire interior of the building will have to be gutted and clinical space will have to be built inside of the building. And can you please remind me of the location? It is on 2nd Street in downtown Livermore, about a block over from the Vine. Okay, oh, thank you. Thanks, Patty. Any other questions by the commissioners? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to line 12, submission number 11. Uh, any public comment on Culinary Angels? Uh, no public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions or comments by the commission? I see Susan's hand. Um, yeah, I wanted to just say that I think their program's amazing. And um, I do want to let them know that if by the end of this meeting, we are still in a position where we won't be funding they have a really great new alternative in the Tri-Valley 
Um, the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance has just uh, rolled out their um, grant program. It's a quarterly program and um, it's the expansion of the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Fund. And they're giving out one to $5,000 grants um, four times a year. And uh, the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance supports all new and growing nonprofits in the area. So I just really encourage them to look into that as a new option for them. And they can find the information at tvnpa.org um, slash tvnf, so. Great, thank you, Susan. Any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, we will move next to line 13, submission number 20, Open Heart Kitchen. Any public comment or representatives? Yep, and Denise. All right, Denise, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Denise Bridges from Open Heart Kitchen. I'm the development director. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Denise. Any questions from the commissioners? I'm trying to watch for those little raised hands on there. I do not see any. All right, thank you, Denise. All thank right, you. Uh, line 14, submission 21, Spectrum Community Services. Aaron, any public comment? Uh, we have uh, Carrie Odis has her hand raised. Okay, Carrie, the floor is yours. Just wanna let you know that I'm here for any questions. Thank you, Carrie. Any questions from the commission? I am not seeing any questions. Okay, thank you. Just make uh, a comment. I don't know if this is the right time to bring it up or not, but it, it seemed to me that the logic uh, in terms of the money allocations seem very consistent. Uh, in other words, the organizations that I felt were like super, super critical in terms of the safety net services received more or less the same percentage that they had requested. I mean, <laughs> among, I think they're like, I would consider like four, maybe five of them seem to be like the top of the list. Like when I mean, you can't argue with food Food, like food pantries or seniors meals. So it just seemed to me like overall the, the numbers seem to like hang together because those ones that I thought were really high priority got approximately the same percentage of funding. Thanks MJ, all, all comments are important and observations, so thank you. If that and helps, I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, and to, Jay, to Jay's point, you know, he did have that slide that there were a lot of factors that went into it and as you said, safety net is very high up. So thank you. Okay, let's go to line 15, submission number 25, Tri-Valley Haven Food Pantry. Aaron, any public comment? Yes, Christine. Okay, Christine, the floor is yours. Christine Dillman, I am the Associate Director for Tri-Valley Haven, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for being here, Christine. Uh, commissioners, any uh, questions for Christine? I do want to mention that on February 22nd, Tri-Valley Haven opened its new client choice food pantry, and we are having a grand opening celebration on March 17th at 11 and we would love you to attend. <clears throat> Thank you for that invite and congratulations. Hopefully between Edith and Jay, we'll get all these invites and notes that we'll, <laughs> we'll know everything that's going on. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, Christine. Christine, if you can email me that, I think I remember seeing that and I thought I forwarded it. There's a few um, new programs going out there. So send it to me and I'll get it to the commission again. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions for Christine? Um, Joe, this is Janine. I um, can you hear me okay? 
Yep, the floor sure. is yours. Thank you. I just want to say to our presenters and the representatives that are here, um, don't take no comments or questions the wrong way, um, because a lot of you have been coming to us for grants for years, and we're very familiar with your organizations, and we know the tremendous work that you do in our community. Um, and that's probably why there's not a lot of questions and comments right now. I just wanted to say that to make sure you understand how much we appreciate you being here and the work that you do. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Thank you, Janine. That's why this is the best commission that that is in Pleasanton. I'll, I'll put this commission up against any other that uh, we're here because we care about all of you. And um, I, I agree, no question. Probably later on, we're gonna be having some, some debate. So we'll get into that later. So thank you, Janine. I would, I would also add to that, that maybe the lack, maybe the lack of a lot of questions is that we've already put so much work into reviewing all the applications. <laughs> and point. some of our questions have already been addressed. So um, it's, it, I'm just saying it's not for the lack of our knowledge. That, thank, that thank you, MJ. Yeah. Okay, let's move down to line 18, submission 26, Tri-Valley Haven, Shiloh. Um, so we know Christine is here. So any questions on Shiloh? Or any public comment, Aaron? No public comment. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Okay, hearing none, we will move to line 19, number 27, Tri-Valley Haven Sojourner House. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions by the commission? Hearing none, we'll move to line 22, submission four, Calico Center. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions by the commission? Seeing, hearing none, we'll move to line 23, submission 18, uh, legal assistance for seniors. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Commission, any questions, comments? Um, this is Janine. Is there a representative here um, for um, legal services for seniors? That'd be great. Jim Tregieri, I believe. Is is there James or um, Tregieri? Greg, 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 that's right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're really. The development associate. It, it is a little hard to hear you. You're garbled, but I just had a quick question. Um, because of COVID and using Zoom to, to service a lot of um, clients, be, because seniors have such a, a lot of times, I'm um, stereotyping, but have some trouble with technology. I'm wondering if it's been difficult to help the seniors with their legal, with the legal assistance. How has that been going? Well, we've made a lot of progress in a number of different areas. So let's take community education, for example. Um, in October of last year, we started moving um, in uh, Pleasanton in particular to a lot of in-person community education. And actually in the last uh, five months, we provided 292 seniors in uh, Pleasanton with various uh, forms of, uh, of education, uh, things like fraud, information about our housing legal services. So it was important for us to try to get out and actually be with seniors in person where possible. Uh, I think we have now throughout Alameda County since the summer, uh, July, August of 2021, 
uh, we're now in about eight different uh, cities throughout Alameda County providing community education. Um, when it comes to either our legal services or our health insurance counseling and advocacy program, uh, most of those services still tend to be provided using technology. So the phone, video conference, uh, email, but uh, in the last few months, we've also started making some progress in providing legal services um, to, uh, to seniors in person. For example, with our guardianship uh, program, uh, one of our staff members is now meeting regularly with clients in our Oakland office, uh, as well as one of our uh, lead attorneys, Kristen Boney. Uh, she's been coming in to meet with clients as well. Uh, so there is this kind of a continuing progression toward delivering uh, more services uh, in person. But, you know, the courts still, uh, for most uh, hearings, particularly in the probate court, uh, continue to uh, continue to conduct evidentiary hearings and most hearings uh, through use of technology. We do find that our clients do prefer this, um, and we'll have to kind of just take the lead of the court and see how that progresses over the course of 2020. But uh, we are doing our best to get out of the community, um, you know, and we we are very um, cognizant of the digital divide. So we try to work with partners like. Um, Meals on Wheels and uh, Open Heart Kitchen to provide flyers, informational flyers in Spanish and English about our services. So we're trying to do the best we can um, and to kind of sort of, to kind of navigate around um, the, uh, the, the technology issue where we can. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Of course, my pleasure. Any other questions for Greg? I, I have one, Je, uh, Joe, thanks. Sure, thank you, Susan. First, Greg, I've always just been so impressed with the collaboration, um, you know, how you work with Spectrum and, and Open Heart Kitchen, all, all the other services that are also trying to provide quality of life um, for our seniors. Are you seeing or anticipating an increase needing for your services as our population ages in place? Are you already seeing that or are you projecting out for that? We are already seeing that. And we like to cite the statistic, of course, this is a nationwide statistic, but every day it's kind of hard to believe that 10,000 Americans are turning 65. And in this county with the growth of population that we have, we see those statistics, you know, in proportion, continuing to climb. Um, you know, we're, what we're concerned with in particular is now that you know, our fingers we're moving out of the COVID pandemic and society will begin opening up more, um, that there's going to be, um, you know, given what happens with the uh, moratorium on the housing, um, a lot of need for our housing legal services. And we have been able to grow those services since we began them in 2017. Um, but there's just so much need. Um, you know, we get referrals from APS. We work with the community to try to let uh, folks know that these services here are here and the seniors are taking advantage of them. So I think we do anticipate as this year progresses that um, particularly housing services are going to be um, uh, desired more by seniors. And we're also um, concerned about things like elder abuse. Um, you know, we, we, we saw that with the very initial stages of the pandemic, um, our services in that area kind of uh, takes it down, but they have been ticking up um, over, over the last many months. So we do see that the population as it ages is wanting to use our, our services more and more. Uh, we're doing our best to, to try to, um, to be resilient and, uh, and resourceful, but particularly since um, you know, the court is requiring meetings to be conducted remotely, it, it sometimes takes up even more time because we have attorneys that have to go to the client's home to get paperwork and 
um, a lot of times we, I, I've heard from our attorneys, they have to actually work to coach um, our senior clients on technology because sometimes they're not as adept. Um, so it's, there are a lot of issues that we're concerned about right now, but we definitely do see um, an increased need um, over the next several years uh, in terms of, of services for seniors, yes. Thank you. I have a question related to, um, I, I know just looking at our sheet, we have you down for serving 25 Pleasanton residents last year. Um, do you see that, that going up based upon your comments? Well, we, would, we would certainly like to. So of the three categories, I think we're, we're hoping to provide legal services for 25, um, community education for 300, and then health insurance counseling for 120. Um, oh. you know, important information about Medicare. Legal services are very um, individually tailored to the specific clients. So we're actually often representing them in court. Um, you know, it could be on elder abuse or guardianship or conservatorship, mm -hmm. uh, housing or public services, public health. And the reason that number is a little bit lower in relationship to the others is just because of the amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in court with one of our wonderful attorneys, Maria Palazzolo in Hayward, uh, just a couple of months ago. She, she was successfully able to get a um, elder abuse restraining order for one of her clients. Uh, there's a lot of time that goes into the process, um, you know, interviewing witnesses, um, uh, you know, going to court, uh, working with the clients. Uh, some cases are, are more arduous than others. Uh, so th that's why that number tends to be a little bit lower than, than some of the other services that we provide. I see. Okay. Any other questions for Greg? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to line 24, submission 24, Tri-Valley Haven, counseling and legal services. Any public comment, Darren? No public comment. Thank you. Any questions or comments by the commission? I am hearing none, seeing none. Uh, line 27, submission 22, Sunflower Hill, uh, program support. Do we have any public comment or someone representing Sunflower Hill? Uh, Pamela representing Sunflower Hill. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, hello, commissioners. This is Pamela Zilski from Sunflower Hill. I'm the advancement director. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Pamela. Any questions uh, for Pamela on the program support? I am seeing none, hearing none, uh, but we'll keep you on the line, Pamela, because uh, line 28, submission 23, uh, adults with Developmental Disabilities Program. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Erin. Any questions by the commissioners for Pamela on this one? Seeing none, hearing none. Okay, line 31, submission number two, Assistance League of Amador Valley, Operation School Bell. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Anyone representing Assistance League? Denise Barr. Thank you for coming, Denise. Does anyone have any questions for Denise or any comment? If there are no questions, I would like to plead my case for just a minute, if I could. Um, I'm Denise Barr, the Grants Chair for uh, the Assistance League of Amateur Valley, and thank you, Commissioners, for your um, consideration. 
one of the comments that I heard regarding the denial of our request is that we're duplicate of Hively Closet, and I would respectfully somewhat disagree with that in that we are different. Our members take the students shopping, so the students not only receive clothes that they select themselves, they also learn a little bit about budgeting uh, regarding what the cost of the clothes are. In addition, Operational School Bell is not just clothing. There are actually six programs under Operational School Bell. And in the application, I did note that we have uh, books of, of my own, where for the first time a child is allowed, as per, a book is purchased for a child, they're allowed to bring home. And for many times, I'm sorry, very often it's the first time they've had a book of their own. And one of the advantages we've heard of, about that is that in some cases, uh, that child is the only person in the house that speaks English. And with that book, they then can sometimes help the other mem family members learn English. So Books of My Own is another large part of our program, as well as Foster Kids. We are actually trying to expand our Foster Kids program in working um, with the uh, various organizations. Gathering Place is one of our focuses right now. And we do provide um, school supplies to the children with a backpack. And for the first time this year, we hope to expand it next year, uh, we identified, I believe Gallery Place identified 10 college-bound foster kids. These are foster kids that were seniors that were heading for college, and we were able to uh, pack very, very full, a backpack again with college-level school supplies as well as some personal hygiene supplies. So again, just wanted to um, uh, emphasize that Operational School Bell is not just clothing, um, but we do uh, uh, service the children that are in need and, part, and families. As well as the Title I schools, that's where we reached out in the past. And I, it's sounding like to me that maybe we should reach out a little bit more uh, beyond Title I schools uh, to the Pleasanton schools at this point, too. So I appreciate that comment. I think I'll take that back to the board as well. So again, just uh, thank you for your time and appreciate um, uh, your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Denise. Sure. Denise, where, where have you been getting your funds from historically? Um, well, last year we were funded um, or partially funded by the commission, so that was wonderful. Then we also have um, some corporate uh, grants. Uh, Blackberry um, usually provides us with the grant. Um, the North Pleasanton Rotary Club also provide, provides us the grant. This year they lowered the grant than they had provided in the past. Um, Livermore, uh, Livermore uh, Rotary Club also usually provides a grant, haven't heard from them this year. So it's mostly um, local philanthropic, or, I'm sorry, locally, mostly <laughs> fraternal organizations as well as some um, businesses. Thank you. And do you work with the, um, with Boys Team Charity and the National Charities League? Is that, are you the organization that both of them support as well? I don't, those don't sound familiar. We're a chapter of a National Assistance League. Okay, so it is different. Thank you, that answered yes. my question. Thank you. Hey, Susan. Yeah, Denise, I'm, I'm interested. You, you said you work with the Title I school here in town, and, and, and you mentioned uh, foster families. Do you work with Agape Villages as well to help um, children who um, fall under their purview, the foster children? No, I haven't. Not that I'm aware of, but I'm going to make a note about that and ask. I would. They're very active in the Tri-Valley. and. Okay. Um, one of the things that they do is provide educational assistance to foster children. Okay. And, yeah. And they might be just a really good connection for you too. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Susan. Janine. Thanks, Joe. Um, hi, Denise. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, it says under operation school bell that um, the estimate, <clears throat> pardon me, you estimate to serve 200 Pleasanton residents. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, is that, are, are those 200, are they all from R1 um, Valley View, R1 School Valley View? I believe so. But again, it's it's the clothing as well as the books of my own, as well as some of the foster kids, as well as some of the, um, I'm missing one more. Uh, oh, we do also do, oh, no, no, they're not from Pleasanton. Uh, so it'd be the, the books of my own, the clothing, Oh, screen. Uh, nope. Earth. Nope. That's Pleasanton too. Uh, foster kids, books of my own and clothing the children. Those are the three major ones for Pleasanton. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great questions. Anyone else? I have a question um, for operation school bell. Does Denise, does, um, 
assistance league look request for funds from uh, city of Livermore and city of Dublin or just Pleasanton? Uh, we tried city of Livermore last year and were declined. Um, and Dublin, um, we haven't tried yet. Um, we, our presence in Dublin wasn't as strong as we'd hoped. So our, uh, public relations officer is actually, um, encouraging is doing more work to get our presence more known in Dublin so that, um, hopefully we might be, be get some funding later, but at this point, Pleasanton is the only one for this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Denise? Scrolling through. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, we will next go to line 32, submission six, Shabola Las Positas, Career Center Job Support. Any public comment, Aaron? No public comment. Okay. And is anyone here from Shabola Las Positas? Yes, Sarah Holtzclaw. Thank you, Sarah. Sure. Does anyone have any questions for Sarah or any comments? I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, sir, with COVID, has there been a greater need or a lesser need for your services? It seems like everywhere that I'm looking right now, every time I drive by, everybody's hiring. Yeah. So does that mean that fewer people are coming to you for services or you know, how is that affecting you? Um, it has meant that fewer people are, are coming to us, but to be honest, the, the signs that you're seeing are for 15 to $17 jobs. Um, and so the, the number of people coming to us looking for those jobs, I mean, that you can walk in and to true value and get a job that way. It's the, um, the jobs that need networking and need more of the jobs, the formal job search that we are, we specialize in in helping people through that. Uh, where we are helping people these these days through COVID, we have grants to even help pay um, job seekers their rent and their um, and mortgage and their utility bills and that sort of thing. So some of our services have morphed during COVID in order to help the job seekers what in what they need. Um, while they couldn't work, they still had bills to pay, just like the rest of us. So um, they they are. They're still coming to us, but in fewer numbers um, at the moment. We um, we always keep thinking that the tide is going to turn on uh, the next month, right? Um, as you probably hear in, in the national news. Um, and the employers are coming out of the woodwork looking for people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Sarah on... Submission number six, job support. If not, we will keep you on the line, Sarah, for line 33, submission number seven, the EIT support program. Any public comment, Aaron? No public comment. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? Yeah, I was, I was curious to know, um, is this the same as the VITA program? It is the VITA program, MJ. It is the only VITA program in um, a 1,500-mile radius between Fremont and Concord and Hayward and Tracy. So we cover a very large swath of mm -hmm. um, people. I encourage you to come by on a Wednesday. Today was tax day at the Career Center, and um, we have volunteers doing things remotely these days. We can, we, um, the clients will bring their paperwork in, we accept it and then scan it and put and send it off in a secure website uh, for, the, for the volunteers to, to prepare the taxes at home. Um, we've got it down and we're one of the only programs in the East Bay, in the Bay Area actually, that is actually doing the services remotely these days. I mean, I, I just know the IT, EITC program is so valuable. And I just wondered what your feelings were about how much of the community you're reaching with, you know, with the opportunity to apply for, for the credits. Not enough. <laughs> um, there are uh, nationally only 20% of the people that are um, eligible for the EITC, which is the country's best poverty reduction mm -hmm. 
a program um, since its inception in the 70s. The, uh, it's the best poverty reduction around, uh, but only 20% of those that are um, eligible for the EITC actually file their taxes and get it. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the um, part of both the challenge and of our ask to try to increase our reach to get more people. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Sarah? Sorry, clicking through, seeing or hearing none. We'll move to line 34, submission eight, city center of the Tri-Valley. Any public comment? Uh, no public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Anyone representing? Yes. Look, we have maybe two. Christine and Margaret Ann. Hi there. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Christine. Christine, number two. Um, I'm the CEO. And then, Margaret, are you on? I am here. Okay, so we have Christine and Margaret Ann. Uh, are there any questions by the commissioners? Scrolling and listening, do not hear or see any. So we will move next to line 35, submission 15. Hively Community Engagement Coordinator, any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Vanessa, are you still here? She's in. I'm here. I'm available Great. for any questions. Thank you. All right. Any questions from the commission? I'm scanning and listening. Do not hear any on that one. So we will go to line 36, submission 16, Hively Family Resource Center. Any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions from the commission? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, line 37, uh, submission 17, Hope Hospice. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. Thank you, Aaron. Do we have anyone from Hope Hospice? I don't see anybody's hand raised from Hope Hospice. Jennifer okay. Petley, is she in the There the she list? is. Even. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Petley from Hope Hospice. I'm the grant administrator. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for coming. Hi, Joe. Thank you. Uh, Can I any, answer any questions? Any questions for Jennifer from the commissioners? I have one question. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I was when I was looking through the application, uh, Jennifer, I noticed that the organization has like I think five million dollars of cash in the bank. Am I correct? Um, I I couldn't tell you on without looking at the budget myself what it shows. Yeah, I was looking at your financial statements. I just wondered what the use of that cash was and why you would need to raise any funds if you have enough to cover, you know, probably <laughs> a year's worth of operations. Right. Um, well, we have a number of different programs that um, is not just the uh, grief support and the volunteer services. We also have an advanced. Did we lose Sorry Jennifer? Oh, okay. No. Sorry about that. Where okay. we serve people who are pre hospice, who are not quite eligible for hospice care, and provide them with supportive services with social workers and people checking in on them, and if they've graduated out of hospice. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a number of other programs that um, we offer, a family caregiver education series, 
of workshops, which is uh, very extensive. We have we had about 600 people um, attend those workshops on a variety of end of life care and um, um, senior uh, care topics. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, you know, that funding covers a lot of different non revenue services that we provide. Do you have any like capital expenditures that you uh, have to uh, maintain or improve? We have, um, we lease our building where we are a couple of floors at uh, Clark Avenue in Dublin. We do not own any buildings. Mm -hmm. um, so our capital expenditures are basically our overhead costs, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of our, you know, business equipment and the the um our office space that we occupy much of our team is out in the field mm -hmm. um, caring for patients and um, we have administrative staff who um, are in the office most of the time although it's been kind of hybrid lately mm -hmm. because of covid but um yeah okay great i mean it's an absolutely phenomenal program just really have run across it so many times with with mm -hmm. friends and uh, appreciate all that you guys do. Thank you. Thank you, MJ. Any other questions for Jennifer? I am clicking through, seeing none, hearing none. Uh, line 38, submission number 19, Lions Blind Center. Any public comment, Aaron? No public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Yolanda by the commission? Okay, seeing none, hearing none. Okay, we have gotten through the list. So now we are at the part where commission uh, starts to give input, debate, changes, motion. Uh, the floor is open to the commissioners. Okay, I'll start. Somebody has to. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> okay, can we go back? So I was looking at Tri Valley Haven. Um, if I recall from the applications, they had four different areas that they were asking money from. Right. Um, either the Sh either Shiloh or the Sojourner House, one of them, if I recall, had like one or two Pleasanton residents that they served. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. I'm not sure if Tri Valley Haven's on the on the line or not. Christine, are you still there? I am still hey. here. Hi. Hi. So I'm just going back to your to your application, and I'm so sorry I don't have it in front of me right now. I should have thought to grab those before oh, we started. No the but in, if I had recalled correctly, either Sojourner House or Shiloh had had served across. When we looked across the numbers, it was like only one or two people from Pleasanton. Can you enlighten me, please? Yes. Yeah, so Shiloh last year um, we served um, one resident from Pleasanton. Um, now that said, um, you know, it really is variable depending on the year. Um, and, you know, the really important thing about Shiloh um, is we are the only confidential domestic violence shelter. Um, and when somebody comes in, you know, many times they are being looked for. So we actually meet them at, you know, a third location. We bring them in. And it's very comprehensive. They get uh, counseling, they get case management, um, and we really focus on, you know, life skills and self-esteem and and getting uh, the individual self-sufficient and safe. Um, so it's an incredibly um, successful model. And there are years where you know we'll serve, you know three or four women and their children, but that this year was lower. Um, and I imagine this next year, you know, it'll, it, it, it just goes up and down, but I do think it's really vital for us to be able to be there, obviously for, for all Pleasanton residents. 
Okay, and how do your services differ from, let's say, like a Shepherd's Gate? That's a great question. So tri -Valley Haven is the only confidential domestic violence shelter in the Tri-Valley. We um, don't publish our address. So if somebody is um, actively being looked for, it's a really safe place. We also take uh, teenage boys as part of families. Um, and you might say, of course you do, but believe it or not, um, yeah, I can see that. a lot of shelters don't. So we don't want a woman fleeing abuse to have to say, you know what, I'm going to leave my 14 year old with the perpetrator um, or not come in. Um, we also have a 24 hour um, hotline that anybody can call and is uh, answered by a trained staff or volunteer advocate. So a domestic violence crisis counselor, even if they call at three in the morning and Shepherd's Gate does not have that. So if somebody is fleeing abuse at four in the morning from Pleasanton, we will answer that and we will get them to a safe location. Thank you so much for that. Oh, thank you. And on that same point, if there's one in Pleasanton, how many were there in total? Oh, that's a really good question. I do have that here. Um, we typically serve any year at our domestic violence shelter um, about 240 residents a year, and mm -hmm. usually about half of those are kids. So we usually at any time have about half the children who are also fleeing abuse. Mm -hmm. And again, there's definitely years where we've had more pleasant residents. We do have to... Um, allocate the city that they're from where they last slept. So you'd be probably all know that, but if somebody is from Pleasanton, but they've been sleeping with, you know, it's, you know, fam another family in Dublin or a friend in Dublin, we, you know, we can't say they're Pleasanton residents. We have to say they're Dublin residents. And Christine, you can't necessarily control if they come from Dublin, Livermore or Pleasanton, right? Oh, sorry. Repeat that again you can't really control whether they come from Dublin, Livermore, Pleasant. If they come from another part of the county, um, you need to take them, correct? We do, although we do, um, you know, really focus on the Tri-Valley for both um, Shiloh and Sojourner House. But sometimes, um, so say somebody is you know, lives super close to our shelter. Um, it is in Livermore, I can tell you. Um, it might not be a safe place for them. Um, so we may work with another shelter in our network to make sure that we can get them to a safe place. That isn't really, you know, the issue for, for Pleasanton residents um, because it is one city over. Christine, so if, if oh, you, sorry, Jay, go ahead. So if you have, let's say half of your 240 are kids, the other half are adults, so like this. Correct like a hundred with this like round a hundred or adults um is there an issue with not having good enough access to the people that are in pleasanton that need help um i don't know if it's good enough access i think that we're always trying to get the word out um but i do think you know sometimes people um don't you know if they need to come into an emergency shelter it's super important that it's there uh, but if they need to say, stay with a friend, but get counseling for tribal Haven and also get a restraining order, you know, we do that. So we take each Pleasanton resident individually mm -hmm. and cr create a plan for them. Um, if part of it needs to be, you know, emergency shelter at Shiloh, that definitely is included. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how I many always think it's good to get the word out. Did you have the year before? Um, say that again, sorry. Uh, how many, you had one last year. How many did you have the year before that? Oh, that is a really good question. Uh, hold on, do you mind? Oh, what's yeah. typical? <laughs> I'm gonna look it up for you. I'm just trying to get an idea of what's typical. Yeah, that's a great question. While you're looking it up, just real quick, um, Christine, um, you, you make a good point too. Um, it's not always typical. It's, it varies your month whatever, where they come from, and the importance is that you're there, so. Right. Thank you, thank you. It looks like the previous year we had four at our domestic violence shelter. Okay. 
Christine, I have a question for you. Were, yeah. were, you, were you were you involved in um, in compiling the applications? Um, no, I wasn't oh. involved. Oh, other okay. than overseeing it, but okay. I really I, could answer the question. Okay, I, I was just going to ask if, if you could give us some context as to how you prioritized your four. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we really look at, um, you know, what are the, you know, services that we really want to um, have for Pleasant residents that we really feel are most important. For example, um, our food pantry obviously is super important because, you know, many people from, um, you know, Pleasanton come to our food pantry and we're able to serve them in a way that other food pantries are. We offer um, client choice and a lot of produce. Um, and um, our legal services and counseling are something that, you know, we are the only one providing re restraining order assistance um, and domestic violence counseling for Pleasant residents. The same is, of course, true for um, Shiloh Domestic Violence Shelter for the reasons that we outlined um, and for um, Sojourner House as well, that comprehensive model to get people out of homelessness. Um, so it, it certainly will assist us as an agency, but we also really hope that it will assist the, the Pleasanton residents and help create okay. that safety net. Thank you. Um... We, we may be wearing Christine out, but if, if there's any other questions uh, on any of the other organizations or does anybody uh, feel like they want to start conversation on the allocations? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'll start the conversation just saying that um, Jay, Steve, kudos to staff here in Livermore and Dublin for putting together a recommendation that not just covers, you know, all the buckets, but obviously was thoughtfully done the percentages that were um, that have been allocated, all the thought that went into it. So I first want to say thank you. Um, and I want to revisit real quick what really good point MJ brought up um, about Hope Hospice. Um, and in doing so, I want to preface it by saying that the decisions that we make on these are no reflection, I, I, very similar to what Janine said about our conversation or lack of. Um, it's, it's not a reflection on the quality of the grant or the quality of the organization or the quality of the program. It has to do with the amount of money we have available um, and you know, our commitment to provide human service safety, um, human, human service needs um, through our safety net providers. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, MJ, what were your thoughts when you really looked at that, um, I would have, to your, to your point, I would have really liked to have heard um, how they break up their money uh, along their programs versus, you know, the other line items they obviously have in their budget. That would have been really helpful because that was a huge. Yeah, I, actually, I don't really I for so long. And I like, I was like, <laughs> how did I blow past that? Oh my it God. Well, it's not in your grant. It was in their financial statements. And no, was, thank you. It's like, and their attachments. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I looked for hints as to why they would need that much cash. Because it's possible they're saving up some money for a particular program that just wasn't apparent. But I couldn't tell that it was restricted or anything in any way. So I, I none just, of our other organizations have that in their coffers. <laughs> I mean, none of them. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, that's one of the reasons I rated them lower because of that. But I really don't know if they have a. Um, I mean, it's a wonderful program. Right? Oh, but um, no, again, yeah, no question. But, but I just don't really know. It looks like let's see. Last year, let's see. I think we gave them about the same amount. Right? No, so this year. They asked for 20, they got 20 last year, and we, we're only giving them 25% of what they asked for. 
Mm -hmm. um, I should I should preface for the commission last year at the eleventh hour, uh, the decision was made to for a second year in a row fund all the agencies one hundred percent of their ask. So that's why that's why the numbers were so high compared to you know pre pandemic years where it's been thin like this. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Susan and MJ. Uh, anyone else? Well, to to Susan's point, I I really paid attention to the percentages and you know which organization staff gave the higher percentages to, um, and I agree with with how they how they work that out. Um, you know, with our safety net providers providing food and housing, getting higher percentages. Um, I would like, if we can find it, I would like to give Tri Valley Haven's food pantry a little bit more money. Um, as it shows, they serve 600 Pleasanton residents in their food pantry. And um, of course, food is, you know, one of our top two priorities. So if we can find money somewhere else, I just wanted to start the conversation on um, one line item that I would like to increase if possible. Great, um, thank you, Janine. To, to Janine's point, if given the choice, would Tri-Valley Haven um, take money from Shiloh or Sojourner House to put in their food pantry if they had the opportunity? I don't believe they have the funding to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly. Well, I mean, like if we were to give, let's say, you know, as it stands now between those two programs, we are, we have $15,000 allocated. I'm saying if they would rather have, you know, $6,000 for Shiloh and put 2000 more into the, the food pantry, or I mean, something along those lines, if they, and I mean, right now we have $43,000 allocated to that organization between their four asks. So right, but we're only giving them 22 to 20 and 23 percent, respectively, to Shiloh and Sojourner. So they're not. I know, but that's, they're also getting money for their food pantry and also for their legal services. So I'm saying, as a as a group, they're getting forty three thousand dollars. Would they right. distribute that forty three differently if given the choice? Is my question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I wasn't sure. Sorry about that. I really appreciate you offering that. That, that is very generous. I think we, we'd prefer to keep it uh, where it is um, so that we do have the, the homeless and the, the domestic violence services. Um, but I appreciate you considering um, the food pantry because it is so important. Okay. Thank you. One other thing, just uh, mechanically, though, too, is when you look at the uh, food pantry, it is on the percentage of the request granted, it is lower, but on the other hand, they, the request went up from last year substantially. So um, they are, they're getting 21 compared to what they got last year, 30. Um, I guess it, it is, maybe it's, it's lower than spectrum, but it's not any lower really than the other ones on a percentage basis. Mm -hmm. It's just that their request went up. Well, and we all know the, the, the increase in prices in any kind of food related, gro any groceries has been tremendous. Right. So I'm sure their costs have all gone up. And gasoline and, you know, if you have yeah. to work and you also have to make dinner, your, your trade off now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. if you're close to that line. Okay, so so I think we've come to the point where we're starting to narrow it to what do we, what are there some that we want to reconsider? So I'd like to guide us that way. So Janine has made a recommendation, Tri-Valley Haven Food Pantry. Uh, do any of the other commissioners have any other lines that they would like us to consider uh, for an increase. Yeah, the one that stuck out for me, it's, it's not, a, not a big amount, is just that Las Pusitas 
um, EITC program seem a little bit on the low side um, okay. because they're they um, it's half of what they got last year and it seems like a really super valuable program well they're all valuable but it seems really critical to reduce poverty maybe just slightly on the low side okay noted thank you MJ um, I'm gonna I'm gonna scoop down Mira any anything that you would like us in particular to look at. I, I, I think I saw a no, but we're not hearing you. <laughs> no, we can't, hear, but was I correct in the no that you're, you're good with as, as is? Okay, got that. Thank you, Mira. Uh, Kelsey? You're, you're muted, Kelsey. Oh, no, I, I agree with the uh, information listed currently. Okay, okay. Uh, Patty, any others? Okay. Um, I, would, I would like to see us give something to the Assistance League for Operation School Bell. If we were going to be able to pull a little bit from somewhere, that's an area that I'd like to see it go. Okay. Thank you, Patty. Uh, Susan? No, other than um, I, uh, I concur with, with Janine's recommendation that if we do have something additional, that it go to the food pantry, Tri Valley Heating Food Pantry. Got it. Thank you, Susan. Janine, any other? That's, that's, I mean, gosh, you, it's, you know, I wish I could give them, I wish we could give them all everything because right. the work here is tremendous by every single one. It's just so hard. Um, but it's funny, Patty mentioned assistance league, because if we were to come up with some more money, um, I do think their program is, is, you know, very valuable. And the, the 200 students that are able to shop and pick out their own clothes, which is something that they don't ever get to do um, is important. But my, my, top, my top one, if we can add money to, is the food pantry, Tri-Valley Haven. And my second choice is Assistance League. Terrific. Thank you, Janine. Mm -hmm. And MJ, any others? Uh, no, I, I don't think I just I'm just looking at the maybe the division between the, the, the three big ones that are in under food. Um, you know, the 53, the 40 and the 21, maybe just looking at the absolute dollars at that, because if we have to reallocate to someone else, we have to take it away. right? Well, that's that's the next step. Yes. So, so that's I, the next. I kind of had the feeling my initial feeling was maybe that the open heart kitchen was a little bit on the high side slightly. So maybe it would be a candidate to move you know, a couple thousand down to one of the other places. OK, well, what we. We, we can get to that. Jay can get his uh, cursor ready. Um, <laughs> so, so I have um, Tri-Valley Haven Food Pantry, uh, the Earn uh, Income Tax Credit, and the School Bell as a uh, request for consideration. So now this is where commissioners, you get to make recommendations amounts and where it could come from. Yeah, so yeah, how much, <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> or do you recommend it? it would, I mean, whatever movement we'd make, I think it would be fairly small, right? Because it, it, I think with Operation School Bell, it also feels just kind of bad that they got something last year and absolutely nothing this year. Uh, when they're 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 doing well, it's it's just that we're short short of money. And do we have to keep the minimum um, grant at five thousand, Jay? 
That's staff's recommendation, but it's your prerogative if you want to go against staff recommendation. So it's non-binding, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to say it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I will I will say that if if it's nice to give a little something, but if it's so much of a little something, it really doesn't help them execute the program, then we've given them a little something that they can't really use. So um, it would be great if we could hear back on if a less than $5,000 grant would, if they would be able to execute the program. Do you know what I so, mean? So Susan, do you want to hear from all the groups that did not get or anyone in particular, just assistant league or? Well, I mean, I think assistance league stands out. The others have anything we would I think that was the only one EIT, all of okay. the- Okay, that assistant league- They're, they're the only ones yeah. that didn't, that aren't, yeah. They're the only one of the three. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, Denise, are you still on? Well. Is she still there, Aaron? I'm here, sorry. Oh. Just the time between raising my hand and allowing me in. So thank <laughs> okay, you. thanks. So, so Denise, in a, there's a, a, a general vague question in front of you is um, if, if the commission could find something short of your request, will that be helpful? Yes, I believe so. Uh, it all adds up. So I think anything we would be grateful and we will definitely be able to use it. Thank you. Thank does you. That, does that help everyone? Yes. Great but it still puts you, us, not you, us, at uh, where would it come from? Well, that's just a question I don't want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that same thing, Janine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, because, you know, I don't want to take anything from the organizations that are uh, only getting $5,000, right? And then the organizations that are getting a lot more money, um, there are bigger safety net providers. And so it's, it's really tough to figure that out and to, to pull out where it would come from. Yeah, maybe we could do something small or smallish, you know, mo most of them, you know, because there's a 5,000 minimum, they say 5,000, <laughs> but maybe we could do like a 2,000 and just mm -hmm. figure out a way to get it from, um, the other, the other, the big, it has to come from those three big ones up at the top. Well, the point, or the point could be, I mean, we do have, we do have three on the board, the, the Tri-Valley Haven Food Pantry, the Las Positas and the Assistance League, but the Assistance League is the only one that has nothing. So if we want it, I, I mean, we could go, you know, 250 or 500, like, you know, you can take, <laughs> small pieces from a, a bigger chunk, not reduce the percentage significantly, and then come up with something. So I will make a suggestion to start for a starting point. Thank you. Um, 2,500 to Assistance League, 2,500 to Hope Hospice. Um, be, since MJ brought up the point of the um, the 5 million that they, that they showed in their financial statements, that um, I missed as well. And I'm embarrassed that I missed that. So I thank you, MJ. So that's, that's a starting point. Okay. The only thing about that hope is what if I'm wrong? What, what if I'm wrong? I feel bad that if, since they never responded. They well, they, you that. know, we, we can only work with the information we have. If that's, if that was in their supporting documents, mm -hmm. um, was in their audit that I think uh, is one of the right. Impacts. If that's in their audit, then four point um, nine million is what it right. right. I support Janine's idea. Okay. I do want to say with EIT, um, they were only given twenty five percent, and again, their their services are just so vital. Um, I don't want to complicate things, but I, I definitely support Janine's recommendation. 
on the other. Um, and if there's someplace else that anyone else thinks that we could pull a little bit from uh, and add it to EIT, our second or our third option we were looking at, um, I'd love to hear it. How about how about Hively? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hively, we didn't. There's not that much on here for them, but we could maybe cut it down like a thousand each or something to to just get some money to cover the school bill. MJ, are you saying a thousand from? Um... The community engagement center and the family resource center each right yeah that's instead of the whole hospice um oh I'm instead of is that is that's what i say is that oh. instead of no 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 i don't think so i think i think no i was just trying to come up with some well, there's are because there are really not that many options to remove things from no is, or, and, or is that to las Positas? Yeah, or two. So yeah, yeah no, the, the idea that I was putting forth was I support Janine's recommendation on how to redistribute money so that um, money would go to Assistance League um, mm -hmm. from Hope Hospice. Um, but then in addition, since we have three that we were looking at, um, if EITC could be one of the, uh, if there are any other opportunities that anyone can see where we could take a few more and, and to that, I'd like to see that too. So maybe we could take like one from the Hively family, 1000 and, and move that up to the EITC program. Or, and I know it's a very valuable service, but CityServe. Yeah, or maybe something mm -hmm. there too. It has a huge chunk of money. Mm -hmm. Well, and I was thinking um, Open Heart Kitchen too, because they have 76 and a half percent of their ask, right. which is the highest of all of them. Mm -hmm. So That's I will right. say for, for what it's worth, the commission, if you look at just the commission review, CityServe was number one rank ranking and number two was Open Heart Kitchen. Not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, rather than taking a thousand dollars from somebody who has five, does it make more sense to take some thousand dollars from somebody who has 58? Yeah, that could, that could be. But I was thinking taking someone 1,000 from someone that has nine, the other highly. Right. Because they, they both, I guess they both, both highly programs, they ask for the same amount, but we, allocated it differently. We must have had different ratings between the two, Let's see, for, the, for that to happen. Well, and the Family Resource Center was their first right, priority. The, the, their ranking, their priority. Yeah, and it's new. So, you know, they probably need more to, to get, you know, for their startup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although the first one, the engagement coordinator would be salaries, and the second one is probably for um, other things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it'd be okay to take, I would take one away from that, from the 9,000 and just give that to the, the EITC. Hmm. That sounds good to me. All right, so Jay, do we, do we make motions on each one or do we have you move it and and well I can I'll move it. Okay. Hey Joe, uh, Jennifer has her hand raised. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Jennifer. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask um, Mary Jane if um, she would like me to come back with more information on on that. I don't have the budget in front of me, so I'm not able to comment on it. And, you know, as I said, much of what Hope Hospice does is offer uh, a wide range of community services to support families as they care for someone at the end of life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, we run a tight ship, so I, I can't comment on what you're seeing. I don't see it in the context. So, um, 
I, I do know that um, most of our, uh, you know, we're a Medicare certified agency, so much of our patient care is um, reimbursed uh, by Medicare, but as I said, we offer a lot of other um, associated services and family support that is not reimbursed by, uh, has no reimbursement. We offer it as community service. So that's why we um, ask for grants and community support to help fund those. I can tell the commission, like I said before, because this question came up before this evening and I did look at the, because as commissioners, as you know, each of the agencies have to um, provide their budget, audits, their board of directors and that list. And I did look into the one attachment from Hope Hospice um, the last, for the last audit they had was 4.9 million. So. And Jay, did you see that in the audit report? Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you just verified. I wasn't looking at it totally wrong. But. You know, I'm happy to um, uh, talk with our CFO tomorrow and um, see if I can get some clarity on that. If that would help you. We have to make our decision tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do we have suggestions for Jay? Um, I, I, I've heard, but I don't, if you want to go forward with this, I've heard move a thousand from Hively to EITC and move 2,500 from Hope to Assistance League. And then I've also heard maybe take something small from CityServe or Open Heart Kitchen. Those are the the suggestions I've heard so far. And the other, the other one was to take something from the uh, hospice and give it to the um, assistance league. He, Jay just did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So he's done that. <laughs> so we have that. So then the next part is where, if you want to offer more to EITC, where would that come from? Mm. Okay, well. You know, it kind of, it seems to me, it's just too hard to find a place to take it from. It really is. It's, but maybe it's we a struggle. Just leave, just leave it the way it is. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with the way it is. I'm happy. I am too. Okay. So we may be at a point where do we have a motion to approve this as uh, amended. I will make a motion to uh, approve these allocations as amended. Thank you, Janine. Second. second for Susan. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um. Chairperson, we do need to do a roll call on that. I, I, I sort of thought that as I was doing that. So thank you, Edith. Okay, thank you. So uh, approving the motion as made. Uh, Commissioners Badecki? Aye. Hayes? Aye. Lem? Aye. Parikh? Aye. Powers? Aye. Ruben O'Brum? Aye. And Chairperson Carlucci? Aye. Thank you. So thank you, commissioners and agencies. Um, I'm, I don't, I, we moved some shells around. This number I think is a formula issue. So I don't know if I could <laughs> ask Steve to run some calculations real quick because that number needs to be zero. 
Uh, and I think we just kind of moved m- numbers around. It's probably a formula issue. Um, oh, 2,500. Oh. Hmm. 25. Jay, does it need to be in line V? In line. Uh, or, yeah. Um, is that, it that should just be zero. And I think, I think we're right. I just wanted to, um, I didn't want to. Oh, I mean, in, oh, oh, I see. I, I meant V, um, school bell V still has the dash. Oh, right. It didn't get put over. Oh, yeah. Wait. That shouldn't. Shouldn't matter. Nope. Nope. Okay. What's the zero? Okay. So you. Okay. Uh, it's still off by 2,500. 2,500. Let me just do it real Let's quick. See, what did you change? It shouldn't be. No, no, it's weird. It shouldn't be, right. Um. Oh, POSP is still reads 5,000 in that in that line. In V. So Jay, yeah, try putting try putting in the numbers in column V. Oh column yeah, the operation school bell needs the 2,500 in there too. Yeah, but I think column V was the old one, right? He didn't want to change that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't that doesn't do it. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't do it. So 800. Okay. That's 9,000. Okay. So in column V, are you trying to put column V, the original amounts? No? Like, no. What, I, what I'm concerned is about column double A. Yeah. So, so, so column V so now doesn't add up. It doesn't. Hively, Hively Family Resource Center in V is 9,000 and in double A is 8,000. Oh yeah, you took one out of there, or there's one so less. We were there it yeah, is. we were thinking of doing that, but that wasn't. But we didn't do it. Right. I don't know if that helps. It makes it worse. But well, that should be eight thousand. It's a discrepancy. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. It was nine. Went down to eight because that okay. went to the EITC, which was five. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I think it's a formula issue. So I'm well, the um, the numbers under two service under food services, those aren't matching up, right? Under two, isn't matching up. The um, line sixteen, line sixteen. Yeah, yeah. X and X and double A equals right. B. Actually, I, you know, I, I just found it. So for some reason, so when you line up all the things and services, so from assistance league down. It's eighty-seven thousand on my calculator, and it's only eighty-four five on here, right? Which is the twenty-five hundred dollar difference. Mm-hmm. So it is a formula issue because that should read eighty-seven. There you 000. go. That's what it is. That's what I was trying to calculate. Just that group. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Well, wait, wait. You, was, you typed in eighty-seven thousand. How do you know it adds up to that? I've done it twice. <laughs> like, but he should be able to put in a formula to prove that that's right. Don't override it. Right. And there's already a formula in there. Oh, there yeah. is. I thought he over just overwrote it. Thousand. Let me just finish this real quick. No, nope, it's eighty-seven. Yep. Can you, can you, Jay? Can you check that it's uh, AA thirty-two all the way to AA thirty-eight? That's what the formula should read. It's actually thirty-one. Thirty-one. It's thirty-one, Steve. That's our twenty-five hundred. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So that so it was, yeah. It should be eight thirty-one. Good catch. Is that what you see, Jay? Uh, I don't see any form. Uh, wait. So, uh, so on the eighty-seven thousand. Uh-huh. So uh, eight eight thirty-nine. So uh, so undo that one. <laughs> we can So what? We what's can the, the, formula, what's the formula? Can you copy the formula from V thirty-nine? Is is that a formula in V thirty-nine at eighty-three? Or 8,500. That's a formula there. We go down. Go to V39. Yeah, that's a formula. Okay, copy that. Oh, wait. Yeah, see, so it should be V32. That should be three V V31. V31, sorry. Yeah. And then 
Yeah, yeah copy that formula, then it should be uh, a, a that. And just copy that formula over to the other one then. To right there. Right, yeah. Just put paste or, oh, oop, you deleted it somehow. Okay, we, we don't need to do this now. We can. Um... <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> but it's so fun. <laughs> 87. Wow, that was interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can make it work. Yep. All right. Perfect. All right. You we don't have... have like 10 people watching you. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a lot harder. Okay, um, so I'll go. I, I would say any anything else we need to do on this, Jay? <clears throat> oh, I think you've done the work that's need, needed to get done. We'll uh, um, finalize this, share it with the uh, Housing Commission, and then if all goes as planned, we'll go to the council on April 19th. Thank you very much. Nice job, Joe Carlucci. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good, good work, everyone, and thanks. Thank you it's also to, the, okay. to everybody's efforts. So, okay, uh, believe it or not, we have something else to do. Um, uh, Jay, uh, review and comment on library and recreation department report. Yes, this is something um, not so new that we've done, I guess, but uh, we've done quarterly reports and this is the annual report from 2021. Uh, I won't go into further detail, um, but basically we're looking for um, feedback and comments, what each of our five commissions in our department, the library and recreation department um, have. So this month we're taking this annual report to all the five commissions and asking for input and feedback, what you liked, what you didn't like, and we'll take it back and change it for the 2022 annual report. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that was easy. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> okay, uh, communications. Anything on communications? So, was there any feedback? Sorry, any feedback oh. on, on uh, the annual report? Good, bad, or indifferent? I thought it was great. Looked good. Impressive. It was very impressive. I, I, I only I had one question about the computers, though. I was wondering, there are there 30 computers, that's on page five, and 153 users. So that means that they were, only, they were checked out. If you divide 153 by 30, they were checked out five. Each computer was checked out five times. Mm -hmm. um, so, how long does how long do you get to keep a computer when you check it out? I don't know the answer to that question. It's probably two weeks, but I think the reason I see that as low is it was a grant funded program, and the grant didn't didn't start until you know good way into twenty twenty one. So mm -hmm. the number was probably low because of that. The the computer loan program didn't start until late in 2021. Okay, so it's, it's a pretty short time then that you get to use the computer. Wow. Yeah, I'll, con I'll confirm, that's a good question. I don't know. That's, that's that difficult part. though. What do you, if you didn't have a computer I and mean, you can only check it out for two weeks? Wow. That's, it would be hard to go back <laughs> without having <laughs> one after that. Wow. I will find out and follow up. Okay. Good question. It just looks, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a tremendous program, but you need more computers. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. Any other comments? Mm. Going once, going twice. Okay. Thank you, Jay. You. Uh, okay. Moving through the Agenda communications, no communications. Any matters initiated by the commission? I will initiate. I think the next time we get together, we should give everybody pizza. 
<laughs> to make up for not having it tonight. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and if the city won't buy it, I'll buy it. So. <laughs> well, then I want extra. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I actually ate pizza tonight in honor of our meeting. Just oh, for- what is it? Okay. I didn't know about the tradition. I, would have yeah. I, I was, I was feeling like Zachary's was in order, but uh, oh, yeah. it'll, it'll give us something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, any idea when we're back in person, when everybody's back in person? So I understand the council meeting went back in person last night for staff um, and public not yet. So I haven't heard one way or the other. Um, Like I said before, though, um, it'll probably be the smaller commissions first. So I I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Um, Initially, months ago, it was the smaller commissions would go first um, because they had, they could put five people on the dais like they have like council. Um, our commission is, is larger than that. So I, that might be all completely out the door by now. So I haven't you know, heard, go ahead. Jay, when we've had a joint meeting with, um, we had, I think we had a joint meeting with, was it the human services commission and the school board at one point? Mm-hmm. And we set up, tables below the um, dais going, I guess, perpendicular to it so that we could like face each other and and have a conversation. Um, So I'm I'm wondering if, you know, I know the dais is limited, but if there's no one else in there, Mm -hmm. a few more chairs, places and space ourselves out where we would all feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. A good idea. You're predating me, Susan. I wasn't here for the joint meeting. Are you calling me old? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Oh, yes. Wisdom and experience. Thank you very much. Yeah, no. um, Yeah, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, to me, the dais is not a limiting factor. Yeah. Yeah. I would be happy to not sit on the dais if we can all meet together. Let me put it Yeah. Yeah. Let me dig a little bit more on that and see what we can find out. Uh, We'll circle back. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Do we have any commission reports? Okay, hearing none. Any staff comments? Nope. Thank you very much for the annual difficult meeting. You handled it very well, each of you. Joe, you did an amazing job. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Great Thank job, you. Joe. Thank you. Great job. I, no, no the, the, it's, it's an honor to work with all of you, and I'm grateful for this committee, and I'm grateful for the city staff and uh, Aaron, Aaron's the unsung hero having that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. work all the tech th- thank thank you all for your hard work so greatly appreciate no problem it. like i like i tell jay this is the fa- my favorite commission to to assist with nice Aww. Uh, Aww. I, 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 that's <laughs> great extra yeah. pizza for aaron that's right <laughs> well, well, and well, and aaron you here. should come to the meeting that we have in person so like you aren't just like this logo <laughs> I'll bring a mouse and keyboard I'm, just to, for show <laughs> right or, or or he'll walk in with a big logo on right so, I that, know. so that we'll recognize him yes yeah, so. the mystery okay. man yes uh any future agenda topics besides seeing aaron <laughs> is the city um going to be starting up like the what it was it first wednesdays kind of thing you know, I haven't heard anything. No, they're going to open up Main Street um, to I mean, they're going to close it to traffic, though, the first weekend of every month. The weekend. OK, the first weekend um, starting May, I think. I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking because like, there used to be like tables there were different like, you know, social services groups had a little promotion or churches and things. I, don't, I just didn't know if that was coming back up again. Wasn't that a PDA thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's downtown association. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they stopped doing that even way before the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, Jay, um, would you mind reaching out to Kathy Young at the Tri-Valley Nonprofit Alliance? I think it would be great to hear from her. Um, just... I mean, they, they're kind of the central, they're like a chamber of commerce for the nonprofits. Um, mm-hmm. 
I think it'd be really nice to hear from her just on, you know, how they're doing, how they, they pivoted during the pandemic to mm -hmm. nonprofits and, um, and also maybe, you know, they kind of know about some of the new ones coming up. I mean, I'd be interested in hearing about any new nonprofits that might be on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Potential speaker. For yeah, potential speaker. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Great idea, Susan. Absolutely. Great call out, Susan. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and also for you suggesting to some of the folks, you know, giving them, giving them another option. So that was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Then when it's, cause these are 1000 to 5,000. So it kind of falls right in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For a lot of them too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with culinary angels, because they're not serving people without, I mean, I've, I've cooked for them and I've delivered for them. And, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the people that they're delivering food to live in really nice homes. And I understand they have cancer and that's awful, but they're not children. They're not necessarily elderly. Right. They're, you know, so they don't necessarily fit in our bucket. So I'm, mm -hmm. I was thinking really at the time, kind of exactly what you offered is, Hey, this might be a better fit elsewhere. And yeah. they're unrestricted funds. Yeah. So, so they I, can go towards developing a website resource. Mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah, it's, it might work out. I'm hoping they apply. So. I'm really glad you did that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and so along those lines, I do want to throw out Jay and I, Jay, if this is a good point to talk about when we talk about the year, um, you know, we do, we do want to, you know, have some speakers that's part of our tradition, you know, to have, you know, certain groups or speakers or go on field trips you know, if there's places you want to go, go see, you know, one of the new agencies or that kind of thing, please, maybe please think about that and bring that to April's meeting. And, and Susan, you're excused because you already gave us a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to think you can just come and enjoy. So. Well, I, I will say I went on a, I went on a tour of goodness village and I was so impressed. It's really amazing. So I bet a real fun one since they're new on the horizon too. Yeah. All right, Jay, we're, we're, we're getting a list started. So that's good. <laughs> now I'll stop thinking. Okay. I'll put my microphone on. Okay. No, so, your, your, your thinking is always appreciated. So, so the, um, the chamber mixer in April on April 13th, it's a Tri-Valley Mixer between Dublin, Livermore, and Pleasanton, and it's at the new um, offices for the Tri, um, the One Stop Career Center on Owens Drive. Oh. It's, a, it's a mixer and a ribbon cutting on um, Wednesday, April 13th at 5 o'clock. So... If you want to see um, Tri Valley One Stop's new office, that would be a really fun um, event to go to. I, Although I, I think you have to be a chamber member. Part of it. Now that I think about it, I think so. Do you do you get to invite guests? <laughs> you should be able to invite guests. Well, I mean, I think we could invite our Human Services Commission. Yeah. I'll I'll talk to uh, Don over at the chamber. Okay. If there's a if there's a ribbon to be cut, Janine is going to cut it. So. Oh, I love those. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Joe, you're in anyway. The hospital's a member, so. Oh, I okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so That's I'll right. invite em, I'll invite everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See and these I, things I don't know. So. And remind me what did what did they say about the Meals on Wheels ride along? That was like March twenty first or something. They're taking people out the week of March 21st. 21st and to contact um, Carrie. Harry. Yeah. And MJ, if you can't hunt her down, I've got her information. Was that Carrie's? Yeah. Yeah. Her last name is Olds, by the way. Carrie Olds. It's spelled a little differently than it was pronounced tonight. So. Oh, okay. I think I wrote it down. But O L D E S. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it looks, it sounds like we got a lot of future topics, so that's great. Yeah. Yes. All right. You, 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 you hung in like troopers and you even came up with new topics. So this is great. Um, the last thing on the list, sometimes it's our favorite, right? Do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> I'll motion to adjourn. 
Thank you, Patty. Second? I'll second. Okay. Any of our, any of ours? <laughs> We you did all, it. You all have a great night and thank you again for all your hard work. Um, yeah. You too. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Jane. See, thanks, see Jane. you next Thank month, you. if not before. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Right. Thanks, Aaron. Work.